the yellow man of the West player Bambi versus the red album player Andy. On the map Fidian Teal. We copied and stole this map actually from BFME 2, also for BFME 1. This is one of my favorite maps. I like this map a lot. Hopefully too, yeah. <laughs> okay, double farm opening for men and early barracks for elves. Andy knows what he's doing. The build order is so important. Like the basic knowledge, uh, there is a huge difference between a medium player and a new player. You know, like knowing only the build order is going to get you so many wins. Like this is the basic knowledge you need to have about the game to kind of have at least the chance to improve later on. Like the basic understanding. Okay, I need to make swordmen to counter the pikemen. If I see pikemen, I go for swordmen or archers. If I see horses, I need to get the pikemen. Like this basic information is what every RTS gamer has to know. Is the requirement if you want to build up on it, you know? Archer, like here for example, archers can kill the Vorks, but they can never finish off the layer. And he's gonna even use Rallying Coal. And because the buffs are not very important in this game compared to Rise of Twitch King or BFM1, um, as they give you no armor. Rallying Call, for example, only gives you damage boost. It's not bad either, but in a one on one situation or in a big fight, armor leadership is also very important. So you don't get buff of them at the same time. If you do, then you get like a very low amount, like 25% damage in armor. But you don't get like 50% armor and 50% damage from any hero nor from any buff. Actually, he was creeping this. They, maybe they changed something. Like, Archers creeping a lair solo? I thought they deal, like, no damage to the lairs. But I take it back, I guess. They are definitely dealing some damages to the lairs. Hmm, Andy won by default. What's up, Yoda? Yoda, can you help me to buy a new laptop? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Okay, he's defending. Artist spam. No problemo. You need horses, maybe, at this point, to deal with this. He's, like, having barracks in archer range. We bring spears from nice one with the builder. But I don't like that they are able to destroy the lair easily like this, you know? And he's gonna get the um, banner upgrade. Which is important, because that's the only way you can use your shield wall formation, you know? In order to use this, you need to have the banner upgrade. Riding Call is going to be used on the Skull and Archers. Um, but it's a 2v1 situation. Elven Archers, I believe, are faster. And they will get away. No problemo. The Builder is safe. And the Creep might now be secured by the Gondor player. By the Man of the West player. 350 command points. So this game is looking more evenish around the middle area. Because Elves are going for like more Creeping and more like ut Utility build. Instead of going for the Heart, Slorian Warriors, Pikemen and Structural Damage. So now man can actually expand and his farms are, at least for now, kind of safe, you know? Yeah, but Rise of the Witch and Creeping is easy compared to BFME 1. I'm not saying compared to BFME 2, but BFME 1 and Creeping is the hardest thing in the world, man. <laughs> it's a whole different situation. Nobody can creep in BFME 1. You need to be an expert to creep, like a Trollia, for example. It can, like... Here, a hero can creep solo a troll layer, right? In BFME 1, the trolls are slapping. Like, if you send your Faramir with sword to creep a troll layer, he will die there, you know? Like, I think a creep which is rewarding should be a bit difficult to take, and some certain units shouldn't be able to take it. Look, for example, here in this game is also easy to creep with an archer, but you can't creep a war with a swordman. Like, your Lorian warrior can't creep the war solo, because the creep is gonna overrun you over and over again. It will knock you down on the ground, you will not be able to finish it. But in Rise of Twitch, an orc warrior legit can creep a war, which is, you know, what's the point of creeping? That it's easy and free money, with no challenge. What's your GPU? Um, my GPU is I have RTX 4070 Ti. And my CPU is um, Intel E9 3700X. 
I have a pretty good PC, man. I updated it uh, last year, like almost a year ago. I bought a new PC, so it's pretty good <laughs> for me, for me at least. You know, it's very good. I can play any game I want, basically. But look who's there, Balindru Chivitanga, ladies and gentlemen. Balindru, I up uploaded the game to YouTube, you know, you versus uh, Rangel. Maybe you can do it for tomorrow. And now there is no pikeman. Oh, trampling. Juice, juice, juice. Oh, dude. The wet dream of every Lancer. Yeah, I think it's pretty unlucky. You need to focus more on your heroes, Palindra, you know? Your Eoma and Theorin were level 3 for like the last 20 minutes. It looks like the sound effects are not working, guys. We ride from Rivendell. Hello, music. I'm sorry, my friend. The sound effects seem to not work. He's demolishing everything, and Andy looks like again very strong in this game. We offer bows from yeah, one trample, half health gone. If you are Elma and Theory multi level four, there it would be a whole different situation, especially Elma, you know. Now the creep. Can you imagine, the guy didn't even take the creep after him killing the troll. The creep was pretty much defenseless and you could just take it, get free experience and money. But he didn't take it. No heroes on the field for either player. No Hydean for elves. No Faramir, Boromir. And here's Elma. Beautiful spear troll. Insta level 3, they were clumped. Um, level 3 will unlock the horse lord's leadership and level 6, the outlaw leadership. Get money, money, money. Elma's design looks pretty decent. Beef Me 2 has by far the best looking animations and best looking skins for the games. It's older than Rise of the Witch King. Uh, only a year younger than Beef Me 1, but it looks like very, very fresh with the design. Some people don't like it because they like the more like the vanilla design of the game, but I'm a big fan of this. This game looks like much more modern and. Um, when you can when you zoom in you have like more details like, i don't know why people are hyped about rise of the witch King, uh, about uh reforged that much you know what what is the what is the meaning of that you have already a very good looking game here and if that's not enough you can always download and play age of the ring mod which also has all the crazy animations and great graphic designs like the only thing what people are always hyped about the reforge is like yeah it looks so nice but you already have this dude like this already is a thing you can download each of drink and you have already this amazing looking structures units and skins ignoring everything going for the structures spietro only killing two this time arrow volley is going to be pleased from the album player and every single gondonite beside the banner who's going to get also killed by the lorian archers and elma will be able to get away 450 command points for men and 700 command points for elves so pretty strong performance once again from the player from slovakia he has even the chance now to recruit some of the peasants with the same picture like in bfm1 eight power points stable level two might go for the rohirrim but they are very you know expensive they cost 750 each and that's something the man player can't simply afford as we are talking and Elma's damage is not the biggest, but Rohirrim with the leadership of Elma. However, it's only armor leadership, right? It's only 35% armor. So in order to get the damage leadership, you need to recruit more heroes like Theodin, for example. And every leadership is different. So you have like more room into heroes and it's more rewarding to go for heroes, I believe. What I also like is that the heroes are leveling up faster to a certain level. Uh, I don't know, I still don't really know why big studios aren't able to bring out a new BFME RTS. I really don't like the one resource. Yeah, I mean, I know why not. First of all, it's like very cost if it costs. It's all about money, right? So you have to invest lots of time and also lots of uh, money into making a game and, you know, kind of advertising the game, marketing the game. And the problem is that the new generation is not interested in BFME games or RTS games. Like the, I don't know anyone who is 16 who would rather play BFME instead of playing Fortnite. You know, that's the main problem. It's all about customers. How many customers will you eventually get when you make a game? It's all about business. 
You want to make the money, you know? Yoda with the resub, with the primers for 15 months. I hope this... I, I hope Yoda... Make sure of X doesn't get the chance to see this, what you just did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. Yoda, tomorrow, give me one, dude. We'll have the online matchmaking for every patch. Tomorrow. With ladders, win-lose ratio, map selecting, free play in which you can host rooms, play custom games, all of that. Tomorrow. Imagine, that's what's gonna happen, you know? Like, think about this. When now you're a company and your first priority is to make money out of your work. What would you rather do? Would you make an online game for a mobile in which the game is free to download? But in order to advance, you need to pay $9.99 to get, buy this skin, $5, uh, $4.99 to have energy to keep playing. And you have so many people buying stuff in order to advance in the game and you make short times short term so much more money making a game like think about age of empires 4 for example it was all about hype when it was first released but then it's that's it you won't have like full functional sport long terms because they are not making money um because there is no subscription and imagine now a bfme game uh, in which you have like two factions but in order to be able to play with like engmar you need to pay 5.99 extra monthly if you want to unlock the goblin faction you want to pay like 9.99 you know like that's what will happen because they want to keep making money all the time you want to have this elma skin you need to pay extra Alright, happy birthday to your friend then, Yoda. Beautiful trample there with throw hit him. The pikemen didn't actually deal as much damage as I was expecting them to deal. And Manplay is holding himself, kinda. That is Arvin upon the field. And also I see, I've seen Haldir. Yeah, he has already leadership unlocked, 40% damage, that's kinda crazy. And there comes the Horn of Gondor. Horn of Helm Hammerhand shall sound in the deep one last time. It feels so awkward to see a Boromir like this after seeing Bifimi one Boromir for years. And he's like bam, 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 hitting but dealing no damage. This guy hitting once, dealing crazy damage. But then for the second hit, he needs like one hour to swing his sword. Okay, so end summon available for Andy. The siege will eventually begin. Bambi, the man player, went for the arrow volley. I'm pretty certain that arrow volley won't really affect the ends that much. And... I think you need like lots of stuff to kill the ants, like lots of pikemen. The question is, can the pikemen ever reach out to the ants? When there is a Haldir that can shoot from a long distance, and when there is a Legolas who can do this to you. You know, I'm not sure. Boromir also can't catch up to the elven heroes, they are just faster, better. Hmm. He has also two pikemen. Let's see, Archer Range is going to be rebuilt. Rallying Call has been used. Now they are fully committing. But there are Pikemen, keep that in mind. So when the Pikemen are around, the Rohirrim shouldn't attempt to commit to Legolas and Orhaldir. Arrow Volley is going to be used from men, but Elves are so flink and so squishily, I don't know, agile that they can always move aside with no problems, you know? And... There was a full commitment by the man player, but the Alvin player is still able to win this. There is a mirror of Galadriel for the healing. Replenish units from hordes each 10 seconds. No problemo for this one. Ends available, he's holding on it. And now he has the chance to summon them. Summon them and go for the level 3 farm maybe. There are two level 3 farms which gives lots of money to the man player. Or when you are confident you can always go for the fortress. Keep that in mind that in BFME 2 man has no repair. So you can't repair this. There comes the human wood from the man player, which also gives you armor. So rallying call and human wood are able to stack with each other. One is after one of them is giving you damage, the other one is giving you armor. We have also Theorin King riding to war. He needs to be level two for the inspiring presence, but he knows he can't win. It was the longest game, by the way, from this two we have watched before this game, and the score is still unchanged.